Four years ago, I took this photograph of my friend Louis. I just got my hands on my first ever medium format film camera, the Mimir RB67. A heavy beast at 2.7 kilograms, focusing control with bellows, a waist level viewfinder, and just 10 photos per roll of film. It can sound absurd why someone would choose to shoot with such handicaps, but for me, this slow down approach helped me be a lot more considerate about every photo I was going to take. And as a result, I was rewarded with really high resolution images that looked fantastic when you print them out large and would feel a lot more true to life than the photos I was taking on my standard digital camera or 35 millimeter film. You can only really get this look if you up the size of your negative and pair it with a lens that can cover the larger frame. So what if we could take these beautiful vintage lenses whilst carrying over the mindset and lessons we've learned from shooting on film and join them with the conveniences and flexibility of shooting on a digital camera? Well, we can. This is Fujifilm's GFX 50S Mark II. This is a digital medium format camera and this is gonna help us achieve that look that you can only really get with a larger negative. The sensor is a lot larger than a 35 millimeter negative and larger than a full frame digital sensor. It also has 51.4 megapixels. This means it's gonna soak up all the detail and let us crop in and print really large. I've paired this with a lens adapter by Photo Deox to help us attach my vintage lens to the modern digital camera. Today, I'm gonna to challenge myself to recreate that photo I took of Louis four years ago with the exact same lens, but now on a digital medium format camera, and we can see how they compare. Let's go. Right, Louis, it's been a good few years, hasn't yeah. it, since we did that shoot? I mean, I'm always photographing you anyway, but... Yeah, on the sly. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember this shoot we did? Yeah, of course. That was, um, that was a classic one. Mm. Yeah. Come like a long the way. first proper photos I think you took of me. Yeah, it was just a few days after my <coughs> birthday, I think. Okay, so yeah, pretty much however many years ago it was. Mm -hmm. four, so, three, four, yeah. Yeah, four years. You've definitely grown your tattoo collection since? No, it's all Sharpie actually. So <laughs> it's, it's all fake. I do it every morning. Okay, so let's now take the photos. This lens originally was supposed to cover a much larger frame. Inside here, it's still a medium format sensor, but not quite as large as a 6x7 negative. This means we get something called crop factor. So this lens is a 90 millimeter lens, but that's for a 6x7 medium format camera. It's now zoomed in a little bit, so I'm gonna have to change some things around, um, move the background around a bit, so then we can try and recreate the photo as accurately as possible. So, obviously it's a digital camera, so some of the limitations of film we don't have anymore. We can change the image sensitivity here, the ISO. So I can go all the way up to a hun just over a hundred thousand ISO. Not that I'd ever need it to go that high, but it's nice to know that it is there as an option. I shot the image on 400 ISO film. It, the day was a bit brighter on the day of shooting, so I might have to turn up the ISO a little bit, but we can do that on digital. One of the big things about this lens though, and this whole setup as a whole, whenever you're putting vintage lenses onto a new digital camera, you don't get autofocus at all but we have a little thing to help us here. So if you zoom right in here, so as we can see here, we have this little red highlight that pops up. It's called focus peaking. It's on a lot of digital cameras now. And so this helps us know exactly what is in focus in the image. So we just got done taking the photos now. And one of the things I'll show you in post-production later is the dynamic range. So the ability for a digital sensor to hold on to the darkest parts of the image as well as the brightest parts of the image. So when we compare it to the original image, the shadows weren't as dark as this, but it'll be really easy for us to bring those all the way up. You can see already the detail we're getting out of this. C1 
Seeing your images printed out, no matter which camera you've taken them on, always makes you appreciate them a lot more than seeing them on a screen. So there are a few comparisons we can make off the bat. I think the first one is the crop factor. I underestimated it quite a bit. If I had a wider lens, I could have brought Louis further away from the wall, creating a bit more background separation, like in the original photo. I'm still very happy with the image though. While I was at the shoot, I also decided to shoot a couple close-up photos of Louis too. This time, I wasn't trying to match the photos I took before, but I could just have free range of whatever I wanted to do. The dynamic range on the Fujifilm GFX really helped me out. In simple terms, dynamic range is how much information can a camera hang on to from the darkest parts of the image all the way to the brightest part of the image. And for this shoot, I already had to shoot at a higher image sensitivity, or ISO, than I did in the original shoot, because some things had shifted about in Louis' room, so I couldn't get to the exact spot we shot the first photos in. I had to turn the ISO up quite a bit, but thanks to its fantastic dynamic range, I was able to pull up the darkest parts of the image in post-production at ease. And the overall flexibility let me color match and get the tones as accurate to the original image as I could. I mean, don't get me wrong, film negatives also have fantastic dynamic ranges, but you'll either need a really good film scanner or the patience and knowledge to print your images in a dark room to make the most out of it. Vintage lenses, no matter which camera they were originally designed to be attached to, carry their own unique characteristics, when compared to modern digital camera lenses. These optical differences can give a slightly different feeling to an image, even if it's just by slightly adjusting the colors and tones when light passes through the lens. And to this day, lots of TV and movie productions choose to shoot with old vintage lenses for these characteristics. And occasionally, they can be a lot more affordable than buying a lens designed for the digital camera. Of course though, there are a few trade-offs. There are a number of decades between the vintage lens and the new digital camera body. And nowadays, camera companies can make lenses that can autofocus in fractions of a second, be sharp corner to corner, and be weather resistant all at the same time. They can also add firmware into the digital cameras to iron out all the little imperfections such as vignetting and distortion. Sometimes though, these imperfections might be what you're looking for. A lot of people choose to shoot on film because these imperfections add a kind of layer of personality to their images, which you can't really get on an objectively perfect digital camera lens. What I really love about this Mamiya lens is how sharp it is. Sure, at a wider aperture, it might not be as in focus corner to corner as some of the more modern digital lenses, but for me and my portraits, I don't think that's a deal breaker. In conclusion, I feel like vintage lenses shouldn't be overlooked and this slowdown approach can make you think differently about the photos you're taking. I had a lot of fun shooting with this lens. As a professional photographer who sometimes needs to work under a tight deadline, I don't always have all the time in the world to take the photos exactly how I want. I sometimes don't have the time to use manual focus for every shot and be unsure if I've exactly got everything in focus. So with all that being considered, I'll save some room in my camera bag for a vintage lens but I don't think I'll be throwing away all my modern digital lenses anytime soon. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.